All right, class, today we're going to be going over a cylinder demonstration. Um, the requirements for this assignment is to make one, to make two five-inch cylinders that have a inside foot and an outside trip, so uh, foot, so it must be trimmed. So if I put this, this is six inches. This one's bigger than it needs to be. But a cylinder, if you look at your needle, the, the part of the needle where the needle stops and the handle begins, that's five inches. That's how tall your project needs to be right there. Um, you want to start with a pound and three quarters of clay. There's a scale in the back. If you look over here, there's a scale in the back room. And this is, a, this is a little less than a pound and three quarters, but you guys will want a pound and three quarters. Now, all the steps that I'm going to be doing, they are all up here on the board. I mean, up here on the wall. You have all the various steps. And if you look up at the white paper above it, it says uh, wedge five balls of clay, pound and three quarter each, set the clean ball on the white, anyway, so on and so forth. These are, and there's some tips up there. Um, these are all the steps that I'm about to go over throwing on the wheel. Before I start, just like a wood shop or a, um, a welding class, you need to wear appropriate material. Uh, you must, for every, when you come to my class, you must have a crew neck shirt. You, we, we would have gone over that in the syllabus. If you didn't get the syllabus um, and you bring a shirt that doesn't have a crew neck on it, I will ask you to uh, go down to the library and uh, write a two-page essay in art history um, because you won't be able to work on the wheels today. And you need a towel so you can cover yourself up so you don't get dirty. This one right here is kind of nice. It's like if I want to be an ewok I could. Anyways, so I'm going to put the towel on. Whoops. Sometimes that happens. So you want a ball of clay that is clean. You want a clean wheel head, and then you want to get the wheel head damp. So I get my fingers a little tiny drip of water, and I put it right there. If it is, and then I throw it down right in the center really hard, you can see how hard I threw it down. If the wheel head is dry, or if it's wet like that, it will not stick. It must be like this, it must be damp. So this is too dry, this is too wet, that's perfect. Now I'm gonna get my hands wet. I'm gonna, t and then, now I'm a right-handed person. If you're left-handed, we can reverse the wheels and you can do everything opposite. I'm gonna take my right hand, I mean my left hand, and I push, I put a lot of weight. I lean really, really far over I put my left hand against my pelvic bone and my, um, my leg and I'll push down in this angle and then I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to pull towards me. This is called bringing it up into a cone. Now if your hands are doing this, that means you're not putting enough pressure. You need to come in and pretend like your hands are machines. And if you don't have enough water on your hands, the clay will rip. So you want to make sure that each time you, you do anything in clay, you have water on your hands. So once you bring it up into a cone, you'll take your right hand right in front of it and take this thumb over so it's bent. You're going to push down. Notice where my arm is. You will make it very, very, very difficult on yourself if your arms are up in the air. I tell people hundreds of times, and you're thinking, you know, I won't do that, but I promise you, you will. Your arms will want to be up in the air. Just make sure that your arms are always down. I'm going to take my right hand, and my left hand, I'm going to push down with my thumb, and then I'm going to take my right hand, I'm going to push firm against my left hand, making sure my hands and the clay are wet, and then I'm going to push down. Now if your hands are ever separated like this, you are making centering on the wheel near impossible for yourself. So if you are very, very experienced, then go ahead and do that. If you're beginning, 
I highly suggest you push really firm against this hand, push down, and then hold that position. Now I'm going to take my hands off extremely slow. If you take your hands off too quickly, this is what will happen. The clay has feelings, it gets scared, so be gentle with it. And then take my hands off very gently. Now this is the section of the hand that I'm using my left hand, just like that. My right hand will be pushing up against and then pushing in the center. You should be able to get the clay wet, put your hand on it, close your eyes, and if the clay um, doesn't move your hand back and forth, that means it's centered. I like to scrape off the outside clay just so I know what I'm working with. Now with your entry hole, you want to make sure that your arms are being pushed down, the wheel is spinning, you have your hands together, and you can either do it this way and push down, or you can take your left hand and brace and then take your right hand like this and push down. Either way is fine with me. So I'm going to push down until I get close to a quarter of an inch. Now, if you look at this pot right here, you can see that I trimmed some of the, the bottom out. So you want to leave it a quarter of an inch. So what I do is I take my needle, just like this, push down in the center, and then pull up. And say, okay, is that a quarter of an inch? Looks pretty close. It's a little thick on the bottoms. I mean, a little thin on the bottom, so I just took some clay from the side and moved it over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to go across, and I'm going to stretch the clay out, so the bottom is completely flat. This is, the, this is the most skipped over step, but it's one of the most important. You should be able to put your sponge in the center of it, and it should be about this, the width of a sponge, and it should be completely flat. Now at this step, I'm going to constrict the clay. Constricting is done when you take your hands, get them wet, and then all you're gonna do is pull back on the clay. Now what this does is it makes it much, much easier to pull. Now the way that pulling is done is you take, now I would suggest if you're at home watching this on your computer, you do the hand mo movements, the hand motions with me because it's very difficult if you don't, if you just watch the video. You take your left hand, you take your two fingers in the center, they go on the right side of the pot. So if I were you, go grab a cup at home and just practice but take your left hand, so I'll, I'll do it on a cup even, so I'll show you guys. Take my left hand, my two fingers go on the right side of the pot with my thumb down. Then I take my right hand, just like this, and I put the sponge so it's just barely poking out. I bring my thumb down so it's just like that, and then I pull, and it looks just like that. Two fingers, my left hand, my two fingers on the inside, my thumb on the outside, with my right hand being on the right side of the pot, thumbs together, and then you push together and pull up. Now, one of the hardest concepts for students to learn is that when you pull up a cylinder, you're not just squeezing the clay. You lock your fingers at a certain thickness, and then you just hold that thickness. That doesn't mean that you're just squeezing on it. You lock your fingers and then you just come up. The reason why is if you're just squeezing on the clay, then that means the clay is going to get really thick, or that the thick part is going to stay thick and the thin parts are going to go even thinner because you're applying the same amount of pressure. So what I'm going to do is I take my fingers on the inside, thumb down, and then I'm just going to hold that position and then come up. You can see that took about five seconds to make a pull. Most of you will try to do it in under half a second, which is not good. You want to make sure that you're pulling, taking your time. And the thing is, is, I can hold my hand in the same position for a long time. And because I'm not just squeezing on the clay, it's not going to get any thinner. So I 
set my thickness and then I pull up. Okay, once you have your cylinder, and just say it's, see how mine started getting a little too wide? If it starts looking like this, what you want to do is you want to constrict the clay. Now if the clay, if your top, if your rim looks like this and it looks really off, what you do is you take your needle, you cut off the rim really, really gently. Now if you noticed how long that took me, that took me about four seconds. I just very, very gently go in. And then you compress the rim, which means you grab the rim and then you take your sponge and you push right down on top of it. Once you get to that step and you have your cylinder and it looks straight, what I do is I take my metal rib and I put my left hand on the inside of the pot. I take my right hand and I hold the metal rib and on an angle, I take the metal rib and I come up, scrape off all the slip. Now at this point, I will clean my hands off the best I can. Once I'm done with my hands are all clean, or most of the time I like to go wash off my hands, I clean my hands, and then what I do is I take my wire tool, and just like you're gonna floss, you pull that wire tool really, really tight on your hand, you push down in the center, make sure that there's no water in the inside of your pot. If there is water, the way that you get it out is you take your sponge, run a needle on it, and then you dab out all the water. Just like that. You get really close, pull it tight, and then you slide it underneath. And then after you're done, your hands should be clean and dry. You twist it off, and then you set it down on your wooden bat. Thanks for watching class.